It's what you do when it's making me feel like I'm falling. All right, all right, all right. Hey guys, for today's video, we are doing Finishing Childhood Art Kits Part 6. If you don't know what Finishing Childhood Art Kits is, it's exactly what it sounds like. I have a bunch of art kits that I never finished as a kid. And in this series, I finish them. Let's get the remaining art kits that we never finished. Oh no, I actually found the Care Bears. And, ow, here they are. Okay, before we get started reviewing the pile, I think we have to point something out that I did not know. You guys literally saved my life. Ugh. These two, I never did these, and it's actually great news because they have asbestos in it. Sometimes when we finish childhood art kits, we realize eh, some of them are missing pieces, some of them were just impossible to do for an adult, let alone a child, and some of them are literally poisonous. Without further ado, let's review the pile. We have two Care Bear paintables, one more paint by number, a clay pottery wheel, friendship bracelet kits, and window pane art. Let's get started. The first art kit that I'm going to do is this bad boy. Everyone loved this clay kit growing up. I loved it. Let's try it. Okay, so here we have the Totally Me Deluxe Pottery Wheel. Sculpt and paint your own pottery. It's a very large box. I initially tried to film the box like this and it just didn't even fit in the shot. Onto the back of the box, you can see we have a sculpting area as well as a little mouse you can press with your foot. How fun. All right, let's open this box up and see what we have inside. There's barely any clay left in the kit and it has hardened into sand. Not surprising, honestly, but it is really fun to crush. The provided paint pots have also shriveled up into nothingness, but that's okay, I never liked those anyway. You wanna fight? Yeah! Okay. This circle appears to fit right there. Okay, perfect. And it spins. The batteries must still be working. <laughs> Applause, please. These plastic utensils, I'm assuming are supposed to help you mold the clay. I didn't actually use them, except this octopus. I did use that. Since the clay that came with the kit was all dried out, I decided to use my Crayola Air Dry clay. I have been using this in a lot of my clay videos recently and I really like it. I find it easy to use and mold. I started off by using the weird octopus cylinder thing because the directions said to. It didn't really work very well and I ended up just using my hands. I also got some water and wet the clay so that it was nice and soft and could be molded using a wheel. This is me using the wheel. It was actually a lot of fun, but I did find it quite hard to control what I was doing. I don't know if this is realistic to an actual pottery wheel, but it seems like it is. For the majority of the time, I really tried to just use the spinning motion of the wheel to mold the clay. I ended up with this beauty. I let it air dry, and in the morning, I dipped into some blue paint and began painting my little tiny vase. This is admittedly a very small thing that I have created here. The kit is for children, and thus the results are going to be child-sized. Because the blue background is a very subtle ombre, I did make a very subtle ombre with the flowers as well, putting white flowers towards the top of the vase and darker flowers towards the bottom. I took out my clear Mod Podge. This has a very glossy finish and sprayed that outside. And here we have the final result for the vase. I really like the way this one turned out. I think it's cute, it's small, which to me is always an added bonus. Is it a masterpiece? No, but it does prove that this clay pottery wheel is a usable object. So usable that I thought, you know what, let me make something else. So I took out some more clay. 
I molded it into roughly a, oh wait, no, I did wa- I spilt, I spilt water everywhere. My clay ended up being like sopping wet. Initially, this worked really well. I was like, oh yeah, let me mold it into a cylinder. Let me put a little hole in the center. Let me go crazy. Let's make a bowl. So I start molding. I'm having a great time. I'm like, wow, this is looking like a bowl. And as I kept going, this bowl started to turn into a tray and then maybe even a plate. The clay was just so wet that it could not maintain a form. So I let it dry overnight, <coughs> took out my purple paint, and this is what we ended up with. It was kind of like a tray almost. I mean, we're lucky it even has any edges at all at this rate. But that's okay, I am embracing the tiny jewelry tray. I've decided to paint it this very royal neon purple color. It's honestly oddly similar to Barney's color. Anyway, so I took out my Posca paint pens, including a gold Posca paint pen, and decided to paint a heart with a bow and arrow. And then I got a little carried away. I started to add more and more gold to this thing. I did a gold rim around the outside. I added some more bow and arrows inside the tray. I even added some little dots everywhere. Because my clay had been so wet, the rim of my tray was very uneven. And because of that, I decided to make gold drips around the outside to kind of make it look like it was on purpose. But we all know it was not on purpose. I sprayed it with some Mod Podge that has a glossy finish. And here we have the final result for my very small jewelry tray that I imagine will hold things like rings and earrings which is kind of fun. I really like the design, actually. Purple and gold are one of my favorite color combos. I think they're really pretty together. And here we have both of the clay things that I created. They don't really go together, but these are them. Let's move on to the next art kit. Art kit number two. I think we're gonna do the Care Bears. Let's try it. <laughs> Who's that coming from somewhere up in the sky, moving fast as a firefly? It's the Care Bear Countdown, guys. My sister and I used to love the Care Bears. My mom would go on eBay and buy a bunch of, like, 80s Care Bear collectible things for us because it was cheap and we were, like, obsessed with it. If my memory serves me right, and it probably does not because I was a child, but I think in the late 90s slash early 2000s, the Care Bears were not nearly as popular as they were in the 80s, which is why you had to resort to eBay to get, like, the really good collectible Care Bear stuff. The deep cuts. We had the VHS tapes from the 80s. The stuffed animals, I think, were probably from the actual early 2000s. And then a lot of 80s figurines. Most of them were already painted, but I guess there were some that were unpainted. And that is what you're looking at right now. For this first purpley pink Care Bear, I decided to add to the stomach a shooting star. If you're familiar with the actual Care Bears and not this weird Care Bear that I'm creating right here, there is a Care Bear called Wish Bear that does have a shooting star on her stomach. This is different because Wish Bear is turquoise and her shooting star is yellow. Just wanted to point that out in case anyone cared. Probably no one except the Care Bears. Okay, once I was done painting this Care Bear, I took it outside and sprayed it with a glossy Mod Podge to make sure it was nice and shiny. And here we have our first Care Bear. I really like the way it turned out, and I really like the glossy coating that I added with the Mod Podge. I feel like this makes it look a lot more fun. Let's paint the other Care Bear. This Care Bear is standing up and has a yellow stomach already. I did decide to just paint over that, make it all white, and start from scratch. I mixed together a light blue color, and as I was painting it, I said, you know what, this would go really great with a cloud. And then I remembered Grumpy Bear. I remember thinking Grumpy Bear was really annoying because he never wanted to do anything. But, if you remember, Grumpy Bear could create clouds. I'm sorry, but that power alone is really cool. 
I think Grumpy Bear actually had like a rain cloud on his stomach now that I'm thinking about it. So maybe this is the opposite of Grumpy Bear. Maybe this is Happy Bear. Who knows? And here we have both of the Care Bears that I have painted. We have a purple shooting star Care Bear that is not to be confused with Wish Bear. They are two different things. And a weird version of Grumpy Bear that I might want to call Happy Bear. Let's move on to the next kit. Art kit number three. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this for next time. And we are going to try the Jelly Friendship Fashions Imagination Friendship Bracelet Kit. Okay, so here we have the Jelly Friendship Fashions Imagination Friendship Kit. <coughs> That's a lot of words, honey. On the box, we've got a bunch of different kinds of bracelets that are quite unrealistic for what you can actually create. Inside the box, we have two barrettes and a headband, a pack of beads, some bobby pins, and the yarn. Everything appears to be here. The instructions come with a ruler that I will not be using, but it was nice of them. I will actually be using the inside because I quickly realized that I did not remember anything from my childhood. I used to make these friendship bracelets all of the time. And I remember really liking it. I used to have like a box of them and I would do all different kinds and I just, I can't remember anything. And it turns out it's a lot harder than I recalled it being. I remember having a grand old time creating these friendship bracelets. I seriously felt like it was very relaxing and calming. I remember giving them to people. No. This time I felt very stressed. I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing. I felt like it was turning out terrible and it felt like a waste of my time. So apparently times have changed and I now hate friendship bracelets. Who knew? I was attempting to create one of the V's that this little girl apparently created very easily. I thought mine was turning out so bad that I threw in the towel early and just decided to put it on my wrist. It looks so bad. Everyone close your eyes. It's, it's just, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm gonna try again. This time I've chosen orange and yellow, the color of the sun, roughly, or Cheetos. It always reminds me of Cheetos. Um, anyway, so I took out this barrette and I decided, you know what, let me create something that decorates the barrette. On the front of the box, the tiny child makes it seem like one of these little braids are going to cover the barrette entirely and we will look like we've created a store-bought barrette. I decided to go with the macrame braid because it seemed to be a thicker braid. However, as I began actually knotting this, I realized that no, it was not thick enough to cover the barrette at all. I will say that this braid was much easier to create than the V that I had started with. So far, I have created two things with this kit and I hate both of them, but I will try one more time. I took out a blue and a royal purple yarn. They look basically the same color on camera, which is very upsetting to me because in person they look totally different. But right now it just looks like I am creating a macrame braid with two black pieces of yarn. Because of that, I'm gonna skip ahead and show you the results. I ended up with a bracelet that had a little star on it. Here you can kind of see the color a little bit more. It is a royal blue and a purple. Overall, I hate the results for all three of these. They are just not the best, and I think the box made it look like it was way easier than it actually was. Hats off to you if you like making friendship bracelets. I know I used to, but now I cannot. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye!